the Spokester search, it continues. We have another interviewee here. We have Becca here with us. Hello, Becca. How are you today? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing very well. Thank you. I'm surviving the heat. I'm glad to be indoors. Me too. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a wretched one out there. 100 degrees. It's going to be hot out there. Well, Becca, this is our, our opportunity to get to know a little bit more about you. So tell me, what's your background? Um, well, I grew up, I was born and raised in Michigan. Um, I moved to Indiana a year and a half ago. Um, I grew up in the traditional Michigan GM family. Um, my dad worked for General Motors like everybody else in Michigan, so we're not really that unique. Um, but I lived on a farm. I had chickens and I had cats and I was the weird 4-H kid who would, you know, do chicken showmanship. That's really embarrassing to say out loud. But yeah, I was in chicken showmanship and, um... I grew up in the 4-H environment. Um, I grew up doing a lot of performing. Um, I was in orchestra. I was in choir. And then in ninth grade, I found theater. And it was just kind of like, OK, forget music. Forget all this. I found what I want to do. And um, I realized that I'd been acting my whole life, and I didn't even know it, because I was that really weird kid who would, like, lay in bed, and I couldn't sleep. So I would, like, sit there and, like, pretend that, like, my whole family had died. And I would imagine, like, the funeral and everything, and I would, like, make myself cry. Or I would, like, pretend that, yeah, I'm really good at pretending. I would pretend that I was, like, a princess, and, like, I'd met the prince, and I was like, hey, I don't need you. I am an independent, free woman. You're going to have to find yourself another princess. Because, hey, guess what? I'm going to go and I'm going to rule England now, so you're just going to have to find something else to do. But, um, yeah, so I'm, I'm really into performing. I love being in front of people. Um, that's kind of what I thrive on. Um, in the middle of my junior year, I was doing pretty well at school. Everything was going great. Um, my dad got transferred to the Fort Wayne um, General Motors um, plant. And my mom was actually born in Fort Wayne. Um, she moved every two years as a kid. So she didn't really live here a lot, but she was born here. So she's like, oh, hey, maybe we'll move back to my hometown. And I'm thinking, ha, no. <laughs> and, um, you know, I like my life. Well, my dad moved here, and he was commuting up every weekend. And that just got to be too much because we lived on 10 acres. So my brother didn't want to mow the grass all the time. So we had to wait till my dad came home, and then he was exhausted. So the grass never got mowed. Nothing ever got done. Our house was falling apart. We're like, OK, we have to move. And I was really mad about that because I'm in the middle of my junior year of high school. I finally have some friends. And I'm just like, I just want to live my life, you know? So we move here, and I'm thinking, yeah, this is going to last about two months. We live in the middle of a giant cornfield. We are moving back to Michigan as soon as possible. Well, then I started to, like, actually like it here <laughs> because it's just so – the community and, like, the people are so different here. And I love both – I love both states a lot. I mean, obviously, Michigan's where I was born and raised. So I have a heart, you know, for Michigan. You know, I do the weird thing. Yeah, it's from right here. Yeah, we really do do that, by the way, the hand thing. Um, <laughs> but I just love the community here. I love how everybody is just so much more relaxed here. Um, people are a lot more friendly in Michigan. You know, if you say hi to someone, they give you this weird look, like, why are you saying hi to me? And, you know, here I can have conversations in Kroger's with people that I've never met before. And I love talking to strangers in a non-creepy way, of course. So, you know, that's just awesome for me. And I love the community of elderly people just because I love elderly people. And there's not a whole lot of elderly people in Michigan probably because they'll get run over by cars because everybody drives so fast but um I just I really like it here a lot. and I live in Auburn right now so that's just where I'm at with that excellent well I can see that you're very charismatic and obviously you like talking to people which is good those would be uh good qualifications for the spokester position what else about you would make you perfect for the spokester position um I see myself as a really, I love self-expression. And um, one way that I express myself a lot is through writing. And so as a spokester, you know, you're going to be writing blogs and you're going to be doing YouTube videos. And I love interacting with people and I love teaching people. And as a spokester, you're not necessarily teaching somebody, but you're kind of, you're helping them along, you know. You're saying, well, like, here's you know, this, and you're talking about, like, credit unions and what they can do for you, and you're helping people through their financial problems. And it's kind of one of those things where um, 
I would love to do that. I would love to come alongside people and say, hey, let's do this together, you know. I don't know everything about this, but hey, let's do some research together. Let's figure this out. You know, let's let's write a blog about it. Like, I love writing. So for me, that's really awesome because that's one way that I express myself a lot. I express myself a lot of ways, but I love writing and um, making videos and editing and doing photography. And those are all things that I'm really geared for and I really like. Excellent, excellent. Uh, what financial mistakes have you seen people of your generation make? Maybe some of your friends or yourself, perhaps. You know, it's it's tough out there. Yeah. Um, well, actually, there is um, one that in particular that I was actually focusing on in my next blog post. I'll give you a little bit of background about what I'm going to talk about in that. But for me, um, my biggest financial blunder is I'm really bad at saving. I'm one of those people that I'm attracted by like the bright shiny colors and I love shopping. Shopping is my um, thorn in my side, my Achilles heel. I love shopping and um, my biggest weakness is Forever 21. I go in that store and I'm sold. I mean, I find, oh, I love that and I love that and oh my goodness, I adore that and I have to have that. Like I just love everything and um, I've worked pretty much all of high school. My parents were really into like, um, no, you are going to pay for your own cell phone bill. If you want a cell phone, that is. Um, you're going to have to work for everything you want. If you want to go out to a movie with friends, you have to pay for that. And when I was in high school, I really resented that because I saw my friends with, you know, the new iPhone. And I was like, your parents are paying for that? What the heck? You know, I have this dumb little flip phone. And if I want to send a text, it takes about 10 minutes because I got to push that C button three times to get to the C so I don't have the A. And, you know, that was just really frustrating to me because I never had all those things that the other people had and looking back on it now it's like I'm so far ahead of where they are and um again though I was not good at saving money and I would just I, I worked all throughout high school and I just don't know where that money went like I would go to the mall and boom it was gone you know, the next day would come and I'd have to pay my cell phone bill oh hey dad can you hang on two more days till I get my next paycheck because uh and, you know, he wasn't very happy about that. And that's just one of the big financial blunders that I've made. And another thing that I see my generation doing a lot is we're just so attracted to the next thing, you know, the next iPad, the next iPhone. And we're spending all that money on those things that we're going to buy the next one next month. And it's not um, – investing in something like solid you know like a house or a car like that is something that unless of course you're buying the next house every month but most people don't do that that's weird but um, <laughs> you never know you never know there's a lot of weird people out there in the world me included but um it's just something where it's like we're always we're always looking for the next thrill the next thing and we're so busy spending money on that next thing that we don't think about those things that are going to last far into the future and we're not investing in those and I see that happening a lot in my generation excellent excellent thank you well I'm actually gonna hand the microphone over to you and allow you to ask me some questions so you can just get to know me all right okay awesome Okay, I like asking this question a lot because I'm one of those really um, awkward people that falls downstairs and runs into glass and everything. So I want to ask you, what is the most awkward, embarrassing thing you've ever done in front of a crowd of people? <laughs> awkward, embarrassing thing I've ever done in front of people. Hmm. I can, you know, it's, it's tough for me to come up with one particular thing that I've done that would be like that moment, you know, like that mm -hmm. grand story, like I fell in front of everyone <laughs> and it was epic. <laughs> but, but let me tell you just, you know, from having to talk uh, to thousands of people on the radio and stuff like that, I've messed up every way you could possibly mess up, you know? I, I, and I've learned to laugh at myself and I learned to be cool with it. Mm -hmm. That's really good. Um, yeah, laughing at yourself is good. I laugh a lot <laughs> at myself and other people, too. Um, what is your favorite ice cream flavor? Ooh, that, that's, um, that's a good question. I'm, I'm kind of traditional. I like um, the cookie dough, chocolate mm. chip cookie dough. And I always, like, save the cookie dough to the end, so it's, like, Me all too. cookie dough. Yeah, it's a good Me way too. to do it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, oh, my gosh. I just feel like we made a connection. Okay. I'm really excited now. Um, okay. If you had to, like, pick your favorite song that has come out in the past year, what would it be? Wow, that's a tough one. I mean, you know, I really obviously like hip-hop music. I work on a mm -hmm. hip-hop radio station. Um, so I, I just, I'm constantly liking the new music that comes out. One record that I'm really on right now, I really like the new Kanye West with mm -hmm. Big Sean and 2 Chainz. It's called Mercy. Mm -hmm. I really like it. Okay. Okay. Um, thinking, thinking, thinking. 
No, that's good. Okay. We're actually out of time. Oh. Thank you so.